introducing with your name and designation what you do and then we'll come to the questions. Okay, my name is John Edwards, I'm the Managing Director of Special Operations at Jaguar Land Rover. Um, John, welcome to Dubai. And I, is, this, uh, is this your first visit? No, no. Uh, it's actually my third motor show. The last time I was here was 2011. Yes. And the time before that, I think, was 2009. Maybe? Oh, long, long time ago. Yeah. So, in between the last motor show and this motor show, obviously, there have been a lot of changes. And especially <coughs> with your role and responsibilities at SPO. So, tell us where did the inspiration come from? Well, the inspiration really came from my boss. My boss, I report to Dr. Ralph Speth, the CEO of Jaguar Land Rover. Um, I think he's always had a vision and a passion for um, stretching both the Jaguar and the Land Rover brands. And really, really, he's been very ambitious for our brands. He's, he's got unbelievable drive and passion. So, so I think the inspiration came from, um, from Ralph. He um, asked me to take on this opportunity about uh, 18 months ago and uh, it didn't take me long to realize that it was a, a great opportunity and most of my colleagues in the business now say uh, that I've got the best job in the business. Well 18 months is quite a short period, I mean considering start from a, from a ground up project to where you, what you've achieved. Yeah, in, in fairness some, some of the, you know, what I've done is inherit some work that was already taking place but yeah, no, it, it's, uh, we, when I look back over the last 18 months um, I've, I do so with a lot of satisfaction. We've, we've achieved a lot. We've launched three new products, three new derivatives, um, all of which have been well received. Um, we've got an all-new facility. We've recruited new people, and and and. So yeah, we've achieved a lot. It's been busy. Uh, you did mention something about investments. How much has been invested? Invest, invested, and uh, if you could uh, give those figures and how many people are actually working and where are you located, basically? Okay. Well. Um, we've actually got people located on a number of different sites in the West Midlands, but the most important thing is we have a unique standalone facility called Oxford Road. It's about 20 miles from our headquarters, just on the outskirts of, uh, of Coventry. Um, it's a 20,000 square metre facility. We've got an all new paint facility which we invested about 15 million pounds in, and two new workshops and a customer VIP lounge as well. So overall, that's about a £25 million pound investment there. In terms of product, we will invest £70-80 million pounds a year in new products, some of which we won't be launching for another two or three years. Um, and in terms of people, we've got the most important statistics, I guess, are we've got about 300 dedicated engineers and about 70 dedicated designers who work exclusively on our products. As an in-house sub-brand, um, where are you positioning it vis-a-vis -vis the, the global uh, competition, if I may use the word? Well, you know, we take, we, take, um, we take our inspiration from the car market, from our competitive brands, and from what our customers are, are looking for. But if you, the, the simplest way to look at our business is, my business at least, is we push the boundaries in terms of luxury, in terms of performance and in terms of all-terrain capability. In terms of luxury, we look at the likes of Rolls-Royce, Bentley, Ferrari's personalization, Maybach, for example. In terms of on-road performance, we look at AMG, BMW M, uh, Porsche, you know, all of whom have excellent operations in their own right. And in terms of all-terrain capability, slightly different there because the Land Rover brand is pretty, you know, pretty tough credentials in that particular market. But we also look at you know, Land Cruiser in this particular market, for example, Jeep or Mercedes G Bug, for example. So um, we're not trying to copy another brand in total, but we do take inspiration mm -hmm. from and we respect what the other brands are doing as well. Okay. Um, what territory or territories are you looking at? Our business is a global business. Um, so, you know, the products we've launched to date, they're global products, um, uh, and you know, very much our approach is not to not just to launch in one region, but to introduce products which are global. Um, for Middle East, um, obviously, there's a little bit the demands apparently a little bit different than what you would expect in US or, or UK. Um, how are those going to be factored in? 
Well, the Middle East is a, it's a, it's a key market for the core business, clearly, um, especially important for Range Rover. Um, and we see it as being a key market for our business as well, obviously. Um, you know, what, what I really like about this market, and when you, when you go out in the streets, particularly here in Dubai, I know that's not necessarily totally representative, but particularly here in Dubai, what you see is some fantastic yeah. cars that, you know, there are real car enthusiasts or, you know, we would probably call them petrol heads uh, back in the UK. Yeah. And I employ a load of petrol heads, so we have petrol heads designing for petrol heads. Um, but to be honest with you, um, I don't think it's that different yeah. here in Dubai than it is than it is anywhere else. It's just slightly more concentrated. Mm -hmm. Um, can you explain to me um, how the SVO badging is going to be uh, sure. ap applied on the different uh, sure. lineup of cars? We, we'll basically have three different ingredients of SV. So our luxury cars will be SV Autobiography, our performance cars will be SVR, and our off-road cars or all-terrain cars will be SVX. And we'll apply those badges across Jaguar and Land Rover. So in fact, um, in the first quarter of next year, we launch our first Jaguar product, um, which will wear an SV badge. I can't tell you, I'm afraid, which Jaguar product it will be or which SV badge it will be, but it will have an SV badge. And you know, the SV, the clue is in the word special. All of our products are special. Um, and to wear the badge, they have to be special. Um, how has the first product, the, the Range Rover Sport SVR, been received? Uh, brilliant. It's, it's, I'm really, really pleased with the car, the way in which it's been received. Um, not just here in the in the Middle East, but this market's very representative. Everywhere we've launched, we've launched that car, we're in we're in uh, short short supply of the car. Demand is exceeding supply. Um, you know, I think we probably, well, we definitely under forecast the car. Um, we've been pleasantly surprised by the reaction and uh, it, it's great. So year one how many cars were, were expected to be sold and uh, well, what have I, you achieved? I'm, I'm not going to give you the absolute numbers but I will tell you that we'll probably sell close to three times as many cars than we thought we would originally. The SVR? Uh, the, yeah, the, the range of a sport SVR. Well, that's quite good. It's excellent. I mean it's caused us problems if I'm honest in terms of our build yeah. capacity and our supply strategy and component strategy. But they're, um, as I say, they're nice problems to have. Um, to qualify for an SV badge, yep. what would be the main criteria? Well, it depends which one it is, but let me talk about SVR. It's probably the simplest. For an SVR badge, um, we have what we call some uh, the, the DNA, which we've, we've defined. And an SVR product needs to be more powerful. It needs to have greater performance. It needs to be lighter. It needs to have better aerodynamics. It needs to have improved braking, it needs to have exterior styling and, and only if you can tick all of those boxes will it qualify to wear the SVR badge. So it's really, really important to us at least that the cars will look different and they'll look great but they'll also drive great. They have to have that, it's that design and engineering combination that is the killer combination if you like. Uh, and in terms of safety, uh, will it have the same safety uh, aspects of Absolutely. the active passive uh, of the yeah. stock cars? Yeah. I mean, clearly safety is a given. It's really, really important mm. for us as a brand, for all of our products and, and absolutely for me as well. Um, apart from uh, uh, the JLR cars, stock cars, uh, I'm doing them up. Um, you also are into bespoke operations, uh, one-offs and things like that. Uh, can you elaborate, elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, our, our, our bespoke personalization um, is primarily about the design of the car, the cosmetic design of the car, so the exterior color, the, um, you know, the wheel configuration, the, the alloy wheels, the, um, the interior colors and trim, the veneers, the tread plates, and then that. So it's primarily cosmetic. Um, I mentioned that we've invested 15 million pounds in an all-new paint facility, which allows us to, to, to paint in, or will allow us to paint in batches of one, and individual paint samples. So if you provide a colour you want us to match it, we'll be able to do that. We'll be able to do satin finishes, and it's a very high quality as well. So. Um, when we talk about bespoke and we talk about personalization, we're basically talking about the way in which the car looks. We're not talking about changing the core engineering right. of the product. So it's more of like uh, appearance packages? 
Yeah, I mean, I mentioned earlier, we're oh, taking inspiration right. from um, uh, the Rolls Royce business, for example, the Rolls Royce bespoke horse racing. And I think okay. it's a, you know, it's a, it's something that it works very well yeah. for a British brand, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's part of our, our British DNA, if you like. It's something we're good at. Well, you just saw one more British brand uh, brand coming into the field. Uh, what do you think about that? The Bentley. Yes. I think it's great. I mean, I think um, I remember when Bentley announced that they were launching an SUV two or three years ago. At the time, I was the Land Rover brand director, and I was asked the same question. I think it's great. You know, it's, it helps to build the market, and uh, will help to keep us on our toes. Um, you know, we're very respectful of the Bentley brand, but we've got huge confidence in our own product, the Range Rover SUV Autobiography. Well, the Range Rover itself created the luxury SUV sector. Um, we know exactly what we're talking about in that segment. Um, but no, I think it's great. Because uh, <laughs> the Bentley, most of the Bentley owners have a Range Rover in their garages, so their idea was to reverse the thing. Do you think that's going to happen? Listen, I think, as I say, I think it's it, it's great. It will help to build the market. Um, I think we'll both prosper.